Hi guys, my name's James from the YouTube channel Plumber Parts and today we're going to be talking about buffer tanks for air source heat pumps and how we can save space with buffer tanks using a great innovation from Kingspan with their new Albion AeroSeal integrated buffer tank and hot water cylinder. Try and say that when you've had a beer. Now I know there's been a lot of videos out there online at the moment and on YouTube talking about the pros and cons of having an air source heat pump. Probably by YouTubers a lot better than myself, Skill Builder being one of them. I just want to take the fact that you've already decided to use an air source heat pump and that's why you're here watching this video. So we're not going to talk about the pros and cons of those things. So let's learn about the basics of the system, the connections on them as well, and have a real good look into this fantastic beast. Let's go on with it guys. Remember to hold tight. Before we get started with this video, I'd like to ask you to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's really important and helps the channel grow. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So meet the beast just here. And look, I've also got this lovely LG Therma 5 as well. This is an air source heat pump. Very common, like you guys who've been looking into this and the reason you've decided to be here, you've seen loads of pictures of these online. For the simplicity of this video, the way I'd like you to see this is the fact that it goes outside, it gets wired up by your electrician, and it gets piped up by people like me, your lovely plumber, okay? Just see it as the heat source for the heating system. And at the back of these, they have a fly and return that we pipe up into our Albion AeroSeal when it gets installed. Now let's have a look. The, here is the Albion AeroSeal itself. I think you'll agree what a fine beast it is. You'll also see that there are quite a lot of connections on here. And what I'm gonna do is go through each one of these connections for you and explain to you how this system works. Now it's actually really, really simple if you break it down into a few different things. And I've said that in the world of plumbing and actually in life, if you break it down into smaller things, it's a lot easier for you to deal with. So what we have here, we've actually got two tanks in one. Up to here, we've got a hot water tank, a standard hot water cylinder. Okay, it's an indirect tank and this will take 240 litres of hot water up here. Now imagine we've got a separate buffer tank that's like this round and about yay high and you've got to find somewhere for that in the cramped environments perhaps of a new build house or an old build property. The great thing actually about the LG Therma 5 is that you can use this and this system together on older properties because you don't have to upgrade the radiators or think about slinging in loads of underfloor heating. Now you may be looking at this and going well where is this mysterious buffer tank that has to sit outside of this? Where is that and why is he not showing it to you to us yet well I just want to say guys you've been looking at it all along because it's up here it's part of it already the buffer tank is actually at the top up here like so so these pipes are going in and out what do they actually do and where do they actually go so we've got a flow coming in from our air source heat pump comes into here and we've got a standard three port valve so that should be something that you guys are really really familiar with now when our tank is calling the three port valve will divert into a coil which is 28 millimeters so they've got a really really big heat transfer rate which sometimes you need with heat pumps and then it goes out back to the heat pump to be heated when that's satisfied we'll actually divert round here and go up into our buffer tank and just see this, there's no coils in here or anything like that. There is just a big tank in here full of water. And that water is shared by what we've diverted up here from an air, our air source heat pump, the flow from our air source heat, heat pump, and then the flow back to it. But also we've got these two pipes here that are the flow and return for the heating system. But we'll come back to those in a few minutes time. So what happens is, is this big sloshing load of water here, <laughs> it's a great way of describing it, will come back down and go back to the air source heat pump. Now, the question you might ask is why? Why are we doing that? Why do we need a buffer tank on a system like this? Well, the reason is, is when air source heat pumps start up, if they start and stop a lot, we call it short cycling. It means that you lose all the efficiency that you gained by, by just having one of these in the first place. What you want is for these to be running for an extended amount of time at a low duty so they're sort of trickling along nicely. What we have to do to do that is say this just suddenly got heated up and this was like, right, off you go now, that turn off. And then that's it, it's off. And then suddenly this needs water again or the heating system cuts in, that has to turn on again and it starts heating up again. We don't want to do that. So what we do, we use this water here almost as a store, but as a place for us to be able to circulate water around here and back again. So this could continue working until one or other of the services of the house open up and they're needed again. So the whole point of a buffer tank is to increase efficiency. That's all it is. It's a buffer between turning on and off 
or nice running duty all the time. Another thing that the buffer tank does, and that's regardless of whether it's integral like it is in this brand new beast behind us here, or if it's just sat somewhere else and taken up loads of space, is it helps the heat pump when it goes into its defrost cycle. Because sometimes these do need to defrost, and it's good that we know we can use the water from the buffer tank to aid that process. So let's have a look at some of the other components on this as well, because this is a pre-plumbed one here. So we've got a hot outlet on this, so that'll go off out to our taps, our hot water taps, and then we've got a secondary return coming back in, should you have one. If you're doing a new build or you're doing loads of work on your house, get yourself a secondary return. They're very great. I've done videos before on secondary return systems. I'll leave a link below, if I remember to put that in the description. Um, but that's what we've got there. Coming back down here, We've just got an air vent on this here, and then we've got an automatic bypass going back down here. We put bypasses on systems all the time. I've done videos on that as well. They're very, very handy to do. We've also got an integrated filling loop here, and the filling loop comes off our cold feed up here, so we'd run our cold feed down here. And can I just say something? This sort of thing doesn't happen very often. I mean, they've obviously thought about this in Kingspan land. Our hot water tank ends there, okay? And the water that is related to this here ends here. So if you ever need to service this, it's installed high up, which means you don't have to drain the whole tank out to service it, which is something I used to say all the time when people are installing new hot water tanks. Put the combination valve high up so you don't have to drain it all out when you do any work on it. A little tip for you there. So we'd have a cold coming in, goes through our combination valve. This is set at three bar. We've then got a high pressure relief valve here, and then we've got a high pressure, high temperature relief valve here, going into a tun dish that will then run off. And before we go for a bend, there'll be 300 mil, otherwise the internet will actually collapse. Uh, and that can just run off out to the waste. When you buy one of these, there's a couple of extra packs that you need to think about adding onto it, and I've got them here now. In fact, should we get them out? Let's have a look. Have a look at this, guys. So number one, we've got a little flow regulating valve here. This regulates the flow coming from our air source heat pump. The reason we want to do that is because we want to allow time when we set this up, when the engineers set this up, for heat to be picked up from the water when it goes through. And we use this to do that, and we can actually judge the flow rate using this drop pin here. That would get installed just down there like so. And the irons, I don't think the irons are actually supplied with these. Oh, the irons do get supplied. How about that? Also, you'll get a Altechnic Dirt Mag filter in here, just like you normally would do. You, you know, you still want to be filtering out the products of any magnetite or anything like that. We'll come back to the heating system in a sec. Get rid of that box. Also, in case of any problems, we've got an immersion heat that we can put up here. Now, let's get over onto the heating system side. So this is our heating system flow and return. Remember this lot here is separate. I keep having to say that. What you'd normally have on a heating system, you'd have a circulating pump and also a two port valve on that. This would open and close according to a programmer um, and also a thermostat in the house. And then that would open this up here, send a live to the pump and also tell the rest of the system, whoa, we need to go here. And then it would start drawing hot water out of the buffer off to your radiators and then back into the buffer again where it will be reheated when it gets circulated to and from our air source heat pump outside. So that is it. Sometimes short, quick explanations are the best, or that's how I like to see it anyway. You need to think about a few other bits as well that we need to always think about when it comes to unvented cylinders. Firstly is pressure relief, all that, we've covered that already. We've also got another pressure relief up here for our buffer tank at the top and high temperature relief, but we also need to think about expansion, so we need to properly install an expansion vessel. And then down at the bottom, as you can see, we've got a filling loop here that I mentioned a minute ago, but we've also got a drain off down there. So that's very, very nice to have. So what I'm going to do very quickly now is show you each one of these sort of sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to go cold water, hot water, flow and return from the air source heat pump and the buffer tank, and then flow and return for the heating system. And then when we look at this all together, you should go, oh yeah, I understand that now. This could be the tank for me. Before we do that, I just want to say though, this is rock solid, <laughs> right? I had to lift this in here. That, it is a bit heavy, but I mean, it's an absolute beast. Very, very nicely done. I mean, you can tell that this is an absolute animal. So I'm very, very, very impressed with it. And I can't wait 
to hear some of the feedback from you guys once these have been installed in your own homes to see how good they are. Starting with the cold feed connections, we run our cold feed through a combination valve to reduce the pressure and also allow us to balance our hot and colds out. That then runs down and tees off firstly to a balanced cold feed out of the system, but also to the filling loop and then finally into the bottom of the tank. So how do we heat this water and the buffer tank? We take our hot feed from the heat pump and then we divert that using our three port valve either into the tank coil inlet to heat up our hot water tank or or into our buffer tank inlet. We then combine the return from the coil and the buffer tank outlet to go back to the heat pump to be reheated. Finally, for our heating flow and return connections, we've got our heating flow out here where we'd install our pump on our valve and the heating return. And then we've got our hot water taps feed out, going off to our hot water taps, obviously. And there's also a secondary return port as well. Pause the video now if you want to study this schematic drawing of a basic standard install. Installation. So the main things I want you to take away from this video is that we've got a new tank here with an integral buffer, okay? That is amazing. The Kingspan Albion Aerosil also comes as part of an extended range where you've got like slimline and different sizes as well. They also support dual source options so it can work with heat pumps and solar systems as well. And they're compatible with almost every heat pump on the market. Now they might be slightly more expensive than the competition, but they do have a whopping 32 kilowatt, 28 millimeter coil inside as well. So you're gonna get massive amounts of heat transfer from your air source heat pump into the water using that coil there. And finally, one of the best things about it as well is that they can come partially pre-plumbed like so. Partially pre-plumbed like so. I did it on the second go, like this one is behind me at the moment. Just think how easy that's gonna be for the installer. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Like I said, it's not talking about the pros and cons of air source heat pumps themselves, more the components that we need to go with them to make the system space saving, efficient, and also working properly. We want hot radiators, we want hot water. The Kingspan Albion Aerosil behind us here will definitely help you do that. So check out the links below to find out more about them if you're thinking about installing this type of system in your home or you're an installer thinking about doing this sort of work. See what the products are like, speak to the guys at Kingspan. Please hit the subscribe button, the like and the comment and I'll see you in the next Plumber Parts video. Remember, there's one thing you have to do and that is to hold tight. See you later.